Just like in the previous video, if you want to get a point estimate for the population, the sample mean is the best point estimate if you're looking for a single value. for the population mean. An example, I'm interested to know what is the average age of a student at the college. So I'm going to give the average age of our class, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 students. So let me start. Let me add the numbers. I'm going to find, take your ages, add them, and divide by 12. Scott, we'll start with you. 20. 20 plus Omar. 20. Matt. Uh, 10, Matt, was it? 20, 21, 21, 20, 19, all puppies, wow, 20, Trent, better leave the room, go ahead, 27, 20, 19, add them, divided by 12, the average age, believe it or not, for this sample is 20.5. So if someone asks you, what is the average age of a student at our college? You have to say 20.5. Because the sample mean, the sample average, is the best point estimate. Just like before, I screwed up with my sample because I picked eight students. If I picked nine students, that average would be in the 30s, 40s maybe, but most likely in the 40s. Then you look like a young buck in the class there, Trent. I feel like sometimes I'm young in that class. I have some people, a guy said to me, I'm 72 years old. I do. He's a physics major, 72. So when you go night students, the number is much older, so which one is correct? None of them, really. But if you're looking for a single number, you get a sample, and whatever the sample gives you, that's what you have to use. Now, a couple of things about this sample, bad about them. First, the size. It's only 12 people. When you have a small size, that's always deadly. One of the things we discuss, one person, if it changes her or her mind, that's at least 8.5% error there. When one person, two people, that's you're talking about 17% error right there. If you get just two people with number higher than or like around Trent age, then all the numbers are wrong. So the other thing is that's one of the problems. The other problem is it's a day class. It doesn't represent all of our students. And if you go to different departments, by the way, if you go down hygiene and nursing, you get a different answer. Why? they will not take them till they complete AMP 1 and 2. So they might come and spend two or three years with us taking classes while they're working just to build their resume to apply because they only take 20 students. That's all they have for instruments, 20. So they're not going to take anyone. So you come to the class, we'll take you, and you end up failing, and there's an empty machine nobody can use. So they make sure they weed people out before they get to their program. you got to take AMP 1 and 2. you got to take organic chemistry 1 and 2. you got to take this and that one before you come to us. And you have to have good grades in them before they look at your application. This way they know everyone they take is going to pass. So you look at that program, I bet you the average age 24, 25. So it depends where we go. So what about if I'm looking for a range of value? What is the average age going to be from where to where? What is going to be for the population is going to be what the sample gives me minus the error to what the sample gives me plus the error. Let me just jump ahead here quickly. Oh. So
So the sample minus the error, the sample plus the error. Well, how do you get the error? Well, it depends what we have. The error can be calculated by using, ready for this? T alpha over two, we didn't discuss what T is, times sigma over the square root of N. Now, there's also another equation, we'll talk about them. It's z alpha over 2 with sigma over the square root of n. And the question, when do we use this and when do we use that one? First, I'm bringing a new topic, t alpha over 2. What is that? That's known as T distribution. For T distribution, we know the degree of freedom. We'll talk about that shortly when we get to it. But that's how you get T off. So we're gonna learn about that T distribution. Now, here's what we know. If you look at this equation, the rules for that, It's x bar minus e, where is that equation? Right here. Can you see it? It's x bar minus e, and x bar plus e, e equals z alpha over two sigma over the square root of n. We use that when you know what sigma is. Sigma is known. If sigma is unknown, we use t alpha over two over, this becomes S. So sigma is unknown, we have to use S, which is the sample standard deviation. So I should have wrote this really S instead of sigma, because that's the sample standard deviation. So this is when sigma is known, when the problem tells you what sigma is, and this is when sigma is unknown. We don't know what sigma is. We don't know what the population is. Oh, I wrote them backward. Good. This is sigma, and this is S, and this is unknown, and that's known. Unknown, and this is known. I thought I wrote this one first and this one second. I wasn't looking at them. So let's go back to the beginning. We'll talk about how do you read that table. T distribution. How do we read that? Because I need to know what that value is. Now, what you're going to find out, actually, that after a while, the T and the Z value are really close if the sample size is more than 30. If the sample size is greater than 30, the difference between the T distribution and the Z distribution does not make any difference. But if the sample size is less than 30, you want to use that table, you need to find the degree of freedom. DF. If you look at the table here, it says DF, I think, on it. Oh, it says degree of freedom. And it's always N minus 1. That's how you find the degree of freedom.
So degree of freedom is always n minus 1. Uh, let me take an example. Cholesterol pills. How effective are they? So, 49 people were tested. Treated. Actually with, a lot of people think garlic is actually a good cholesterol pill. With ugh, doses of raw garlic. No. breath will stink. So a lot of people said, I'm going I'm to give them raw garlic, see if that lowers their cholesterol level. We measure their cholesterol level at the end of, I don't know, a month, month and a half of using raw garlic. The LDL, which is your bad cholesterol, I know what that number is, is milligram per DL had a mean, an average of 0.4 and a standard deviation well these are the 40 people we actually use X bar right because we test in the 49 people and a standard deviation I'm assuming that's for the sample here is 21 Let's say I want to calculate the confidence, the 95% confidence interval of the LDL number. Hmm. 49 people were tested. What is my alpha? Alpha equals, the same as before, 1 minus 0 0.95, which is what? 0.05 was sigma given to us in this problem no sigma is unknown so the error then has to be T alpha over 2 times what s over the square root of n Well, I know what n, n is 49. We know what s is, which is what? 21? But I don't know what t alpha over 2. How do you find t alpha over 2? Well, you know what alpha, and you also know the degree of freedom. Degree of freedom is what? 49 minus 1, which is what? 48. Now we're gonna go to the T distribution. Where's my chart? Do you have yours with you? Anyone doesn't have one, I'll give you one. Anyone doesn't have one of those tables I gave you last time? I still have a few extra ones. You need one? Right here, anyone else? You need one, Dan? Yeah. I photocopy all these handouts. Let's see, I think, welcome. Does anyone else need another one? Everyone's good? Okay. Let's look up and down where it says degree of freedom 48. Well, I don't see the 48. Let me find the closest number to 48. Which is what? Is it 45 or 50? 50. Now, which one of these columns, if alpha here, alpha is actually the combined area for both sides. 
So if you divide that by two, that's what? What was alpha here? 0.025, right? So you look for 50, and you look for two tail of alpha equals point, what was it? 0.025. Area in one tail. See the area in one tail, the top one. Combine, or you can use the one tail, which is 0 0.025, or both tail combined, which is what? 0 0.05. So this column, everyone see why that column? So 50 with that column, which is what? 2.09. So the tail is the, um, the alpha? Alpha is actually the tail, yeah, the two tails here. So 2.009. Do the math, 2.009 times 21, <coughs> you divide that by the square root of 49, 6.027, is it? So what is the estimate for the population? is going to be x bar, the average of the sample, which is what? 0.4 minus 6.027, 2.4 plus 6.027. 6 I guess you can have a negative number there, which is negative 5.6 to 6.4. I'm just thinking my number like in the 60s, but I don't think that's the same one then. Uh, professor? Yes. Quick question. Um, it says uh, right below 49 people, the question, right? Mm -hmm. LDL? Yes. Which one? Uh, 49 people were treated. Yeah. With dosage of raw garlic. Yeah. Well, what does that stand for? LDL. That's one of the numbers when you do your blood testing. That's the oh. bad cholesterol. But normally the bad cholesterol is below 100. So I don't know why that's 0.4. I mean, that's really low. And considering the standard deviation is 21. So based on their numbers, number 68% within one standard deviation. So you could be a positive and negative numbers. Yeah. You know, so, but normally my understanding of LDL, which is my bad cholesterol, because mine is actually below 60 and that's phenomenal. You know, so I don't know what 0.4 here is. just my own experience with the doctor. So you want my LDL to be as low as possible So because of my open heart surgery, so mine is below 60. It was below actually 80 before I went on medication. He didn't want it because 100 and under is perfect. And mine was in the 80. We want it lower. So he was pushing to lower that, but. Well, you're gonna find out actually as the number of values n increases, it really is gonna be very close this, to normal distribution. Once you have 25 or 30 values, you look at the curve for T distribution and Z distribution, normal distribution, they're almost perfect. I have a picture of that, but I can't show you on the screen there. Like, put it online there. Let's try another one. Huh? Oh, oh! I don't know. The class, I guess, is over. I've been busy. Yep. Okay.